Sarina Rakar Singh, and I went to school in India at GNFC, 1981 to 1986, and uh, graduated spring of 86 and came home, and then I went back in 80, 94, I don't remember what year. 94 was 94, Forest. was there for two years with 4S, then the school moved to um, Ranjit Avenue, D Block, and then I was not there that year, and then I came back uh, for the, the first year of MPA. So we spent half the year at Darbar Sahib, living in the Navas, and then we moved into MPA. So that was 19 years ago, 20 years ago, first year of MPA, whatever it was. We took a train to Derridun, and then from Derridun we took a bus up to Missouri, and we went to the school and not everybody was back yet, so we moved into the dorms, and that's kind of when it got real. Yeah, you got issued school uniforms, you move into this dorm, uh, and then kind of school started, and I don't know how long we were there, a couple of days, a week, and then the guides who brought us over left, and there was no American staff at all. I remember I happened to be on the field at GNFC in Vincent Hill when they left, but I remember saying goodbye to them and they left. And I think remember thinking, I am really, really far away from anybody I know. I have no phone. I have no way to call anybody. I remember thinking, oh, it, like that saying, it just got real. Like, that's it. <laughs> so that was different. Uh, and we had no American staff until Nanak Dev showed up in your Namkar. My name is Jiwan, and I went to school in India first in 1981. And I um, went to Guru Nanak Fifth Centenary School in Masuri. And um, I stayed until the end of uh, when we left that school, which was in 1989. And then I was staff at the school in 4S. Uh, when we were in Amritsar, and that was in 1994 we went over, and I was there for two years, and uh, now my kids are at the school now at MPA. So my name is Satnam Singh Khalsa. I went to GNFC at the age of eight uh, in 1982. Uh, I stayed for four years, started out at Shangri-La, and, and then went to Vincent Hill, and uh, and right now, currently, I live in Northern Virginia with my wife and four daughters, and uh, I'm, a, I'm an attorney, I'm a practicing lawyer. The idea to go to India actually came from one of my friends uh, named Karta, who's from Portland, Oregon, from Oregon. And, and he was going, his, his older siblings were there already, and, and he basically said, hey, you know, I'm going to India, it's, I hear it's you know, pretty cool. You know, you should come along. <laughs> so that's kind of kind of how it started. And I said, okay, sure, that sounds fine. So that, that's really where the idea came from. I mean, my parents certainly knew of the program, uh, but it, it had never become an active discussion until, until my friend Karta brought it up to me. You know, I remember very clearly on the drive up to Missouri, you know, looking at all you know, all the terraced hills, uh, you know, on on the hillside, and, and being very impressed at. At, uh, at at how how sort of magical everything looked, and and, and that that had a, had a pretty big impact as well. Just being in that environment up up, up in the hills or the foothills, and and uh, you know in you know, next to next to a jungle, which, which Vincent Hill was next to a jungle, and you know the, the sense of place was was pretty powerful. I have a vague memory of first getting to Shangri-La, the girls' school at DNFC, and going into the common room and seeing all of the girls dancing to Bonnie M and ABBA, and I just have some memory of like just being in total shock of being there. But me and Robbie used to have a set time every night, like at 7.30, we would meet at a set spot every night to sit and cry. <laughs> and, uh, and then we got over that. <laughs>
When I first got there, when I first got to India when I was 10, I could not put up my hair, I could not tie my turban, and every morning I'd have to go find Sahari or Sumpy or somebody to put up my hair and tie my turban for me, and uh, that was not much fun. But <laughs> I have a lot of good memories from being there. I had a lot of fun. I mean, you know, like I said, I used to cry every night initially, but, you know, that didn't last long, and um, I... I am very grateful for the experience and had a lot of fun. And um, I would say most most of my friends would say the same. <laughs> so the experience uh, going from Shangri-La to Vincent Hill was was really like night and day. Uh, I, I went from an environment where I was basically treated like a young child who needed everything and done for him. Uh, and then at Vincent Hill, you basically you're on your own and and you're you're thrown into this environment with you know a lot of uh, older boys and so you're the, you know you're you're the youngest in a group of of boys who can kind of range from you know age nine or ten up to you know, eighteen and probably above you know the the culture of Vincent Hill was also uh, you know much more harsh than than Shangri La. That said though there was a lot of freedom that came along with with being at Vincent Hill and and you know when you had opportunities for free time I mean there was there was a lot of you know a lot of fun to be had also so you know it wasn't all you know watching watching your back and you know, waiting for waiting for uh, you know some you know vicious blow from some direction you know there, there was a lot of a lot of goodness a lot of camaraderie uh, and, and a lot of opportunities I think to you know develop depth and strength and resilience. When we were there as kids, obviously cell phones didn't exist. Uh, international okay, calls existed. were super expensive. And so it, the primary means of communication was either an aerogram, which most kids today have no clue what that is, uh, or you telegrams. And telegrams were notoriously misspelled. It was like playing, you know, Wheel of Fortune. And it's like, I want to buy a vowel. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you'd get a telegram once in a while and you, you'd have to play a game to figure out what it said. Uh, my mom and my dad had no clue what was going on at school in India. None. No Every clue. time I complained to my mom about not hearing from my children right now, she's like, I never heard from you ever and I had no idea what was going on ever. So yeah, that's yeah. very different. To say no clue, I mean, that's not an exaggeration. Back then, we didn't come home during breaks, so we were there for a long time. I was there for five years, and uh, you got really close with your friends. Your friends became your family. When we went to school, you know, there was just a handful of us Americans that went into a school uh, full of a lot of um, Indians and Thais, and um, a few other people and we just you know we became super close with all of them I still am friends with them and thanks to Facebook see a bunch of them all the time and um, it just gives you a different global perspective on being accepting of all different cultures and um, religions and you know it's that everyone is equal and so I think that that's something that we got from being exposed to all of that over there. The other one is definitely a toughness. Um, I have chosen to go into a line of work in my life where I have responded to disasters and war zones and things like that. And the conditions that I've had to live in sometimes have been far less than plush. And uh, it's no big deal. I don't care if I'm sleeping on a tennis court in Haiti or on a helicopter landing pad in Iraq. Um, I don't care. Like, I've slept on marble rakarmas and, and cement floors in devasas and taken showers under a tap with cold water and lived out of a backpack. I'll give you one story. Um, I The short version is this. I got kicked out of school. My first year, I, my first half a year, I didn't want to be there and I figured if I failed, they'd send me home. So I had to repeat the grade and I didn't care. Um, I 
wasn't studying, I wasn't trying. So, like I said, I like to challenge authority. So they were serious, they made me repeat the grade, and I was like, okay, I guess I better pay attention. And then um, I, uh, I snuck over to the girls' campus one night um, with the purpose of doing a bunch of pranks, some, some innocent vandalism, which I did with two friends, and we all got kicked out of school. I thought for sure I'm going home. Didn't go home. Uh, got sent to Amritsar. Went to go live in Amritsar by myself. Well, with two friends. I was 14. They were 15 and 17. So there was one American living in the Navas who uh, he would check on us once in a while, but we were just kind of free to do whatever we wanted. And so we had no money. We ate longer every day. Um, and really out of, we didn't have anything to do and nowhere to go. So the short version is what became my life for the next few months was we started every night at midnight, we'd go clean the Golden Temple. And then when we were done with that, we'd say our bonnies, we'd finish Asa Duvar, we'd go back to the Navas. Well, oh, we'd say Japji Japsa, then we'd go back to the Navas, we'd have breakfast. And then we'd sleep, we'd get up in the afternoon, we'd go to Lunger, we'd serve Lunger, um, and then we would eat, and then we would go clean up Karma, and then we had a couple of hours to kill, we'd wander around the city of Amritsar, meet people, visit Gudwaras, just got to know the city, got to know people. Granted, I'm 14, I'm just wandering, no, no one knows where I am. Then we'd go back in the evening, uh, uh, I would do Reras, and then I'd say a non sob, and then we would uh, hang around the complex, do Kirtan Suela, and then just kill time until we went back in to clean the Golden Temple at night. And I did that for months. And, uh, and this went on for quite a while. And then we started going to other Gurdwaras around Amritsar and cleaning them as well. We kind of fell in with this whole Seva crew. And it became a really simple life. We had no money, we had nothing. And then I got back into school a few months later. It was awful. I really <laughs> didn't want to go back. But we got in. And I can tell you what I learned from that was um, the old saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone. I didn't realize what I had until I got back into school. And what I had and what that experience was, was... Um, the best way I can describe it is really pure uh, contentment. I didn't want anything. I didn't need anything. I wasn't sitting around wishing I had this or wishing I had that. Now, I probably couldn't have done that for the rest of my life, but I had this experience of I was just serving all the time and my needs were met. And it was perfect. Well, I would say that um, the one thing that India teaches you is to survive in any situation and that you can overcome anything that comes your way. And um, I think you kind of learn to just deal with anything and that you can, you can make it work somehow. And I think that's one of the gifts that you get from, which doesn't seem like a gift when you're experiencing it, but later in life, um, you know, it does give you a toughness that you can kind of figure anything out. You know, India seemed like a long time while I was there, but I think back on it and it was like that. And um, yeah, I'm 48 now. I went when I was 13. That was definitely, I mean, there's a lot of stories in between that I could tell about whether it's my connection to being a Sikh and how that's evolved over the years or my connection to my friends or, you know, being close to danger or being scared or, I mean, there's a lot of lessons I learned in India and India can be a really harsh, tough teacher. I came out of it going, you know, I grew up in India and I missed out on certain things. I'm not going to say it was perfect, but I also gained things and it's, you can't do it all. And what I got was very unique and I'm, I choose to appreciate it. I guess I'd like to 
to just just re reemphasize and, and kind of give give a shout out to you know all of the other folks who, who went to GNFC and who were part of that initial group. Uh, you know the you know, sort of like the you know the pathfinders and, and the trailblazers of, of the India program. You know, I you know, as I talked about, it, it was it was certainly challenging, and and everyone I think experienced it differently. Uh, but but I, I would say that that for me, being part of that group, you know, you know made it possible for me to to kind of experience it. Uh, in, in the best way possible, and, and having that support you know, was was invaluable. So you know, I, it, it's really it, it's really with a sense of gratitude that I look at at you know, all those other other kids who I went to to school with, uh, and and also with a sense of gratitude toward Tsirsing Saab, of course, you know, and the parents who who were able to make that decision, that difficult decision to send their kids uh, away to this school, <laughs> sort of sight, sight unseen, you know, on, on faith, uh, because I know that that must have been difficult too. And, and, and I realized, you know, for, for all the difficulties that, that the experience brought with it, uh, it, it, was, it was truly like a blessing and an amazing experience experience that, that has, has uh, changed my life, you know, immeasurably for the better.